All right, this is going to be part one. We're going to discuss the PMA again. Now, the last time I discussed this with y'all was when I explained how to actually create, write the articles, prepare the articles, and explain all the different components of the articles. It's in one of the videos in the ultimate section under uh, on privacyfight.io. But anyways, um, lately I've been getting some calls about the PMA being rejected, refused, things like that. So it looks like there's some collaboration going on with the banking system and the state secretaries of state it's amazing i've never seen anything like this before so it just goes to show you when you got something that's effective and you're using it the the the, the corresponding party that we're, we're actually dealing with is going to to do something about it because otherwise they're just going to ignore you right you you've gone through your whole life probably some of you have used s corps and uh, single member llc's not paying any attention and no one cares and everyone does it and then you do whatever you're told and stand in line and fill out forms. And here we are not doing all that stuff. And guess what? It's taken a few years, but they uh, finally, um, I guess I didn't expect them to do this, but that's okay. I mean, over the years I've encountered similar things and all we do is change, change the method. But anyways, I just want to share options. Okay. And I'm recording this before the call I normally do on Thursday. So November 18th, Thursday, I'm going to this tomorrow, I'm going to uh, cover this again. But I'm going to publish this video now so you guys can have a chance to look it over, think it through, and then we can do some questions and answers and some discussion on Thursday. And I'll record that this time. I promise I'll remember to record it. So what I want to explain to you is not only did I do that video explaining about the components of a PMA, but I did a follow up, which is about 20 minutes long. I think it's in the ultimate section. And I'm explaining about having a PMA as the managing member of an LLC the sole owner, okay? Now, if you have difficulty, which occasionally over the years we've had, um, we always get our accounts opened. We still do. Um, but if you have too much difficulty and sometimes you don't want to deal with it, you just change the articles or you tell the bank what it wants to hear and leave the articles like they are. Lots of times the banks won't even tell you to go change the articles. So we could do that too. This is what I said in my last 20 minute video, okay, on this subject. Um, we can start them out, the LLCs, as a single member LLC. You can do a single member LLC and be just fine for a while. There'll be maybe some events that come up that you're not covered for. That's why I like to make it a multiple member or an innocent party, I like to call it, okay, as the owner of my client's LLC, because going forward, that'll cover him from for anything, and he doesn't need me to babysit them the whole way, all right? Not that I don't mind being available and answering questions and things like that, even three years down the road, but you don't want to have to go find me, maybe, um, and I want it to handle everything that comes your way, and so that's why I like to send these out the door this way, okay? But you guys can always change however I do it, and I have that in mind. That's why when I send your documents, I, I send you uh, the documents in PDF and LibreOffice so you can edit what you need. So, yeah, you can get your account open any way necessary. You can do a single member, get all your accounts open, and then modify or amend the articles at the, with the state. You can start it out as a PMA or however you want to do it. If you have difficulty with the bank, tell them whatever they want to know. Okay, the rule is that if you happen to have, if the members happen to have a 25% interest or more, the bank wants complete KY dis KYC disclosure, uh, know your customer documents, ID, all these things, right? No problem. But what's funny is when you come in there with an innocent party like a PMA or a trust that owns 100% of the company and the signer owns 0% and the signer still gives up his ID and provides all the documentation for the LLC and then the bank says, no, you're required to be a 25% owner. <laughs> it's totally ridiculous. It just shows you they don't know what they're doing, okay? So we get through all that. Um, the law is on our side always, but again, we're dealing with, I call them Muppets, vegetables, okay? So we don't want to spend our lives fighting these vegetables. We just want to, you know, get our thing done. So that's my focus is to try to get this thing done. So here are some options. Like I said before, you can just get it open any way you can, right? You can always amend the articles. Um, what I'm seeing happen though in the state of Arizona, and I think North, North Carolina, they gave us some pushback on the PMA designation for the sole member, managing member of a new LLC we just did, I think it was about a week ago or so. So my thinking is maybe there's, you know, some collaboration with the banks and the state. I think they're all working together anyways. I mean, it's kind of obvious. They want you to create a tax liability for yourself. They want you to have no protection. That way, all their buddies can get your stuff if they want. That's just how it is. It just seems so simplistic, but really that's what it is. 
um, I've, I've seen enough of this over the years that that's, that's what I can just have to conclude. So I like the PMA, but here's what we're trying to do. Why the heck are we using a PMA? Well, we've been, I've been doing that since I guess the late nineties and I just did it and I've done it in different forms. I never until recently designated an owner as a PMA. It is not necessary to do that because for example, if something is a PMA, you don't have to say PMA next to it. What's a PMA? It's a private membership association. Let me give you a couple examples. Your church is a PMA. Now I'm not talking about the 501c3 corporation. I'm talking about the church members. What do they have in common? They go to the church together at the same time. They probably talk to each other. They're probably friends, things like that. A church, members of a church are a private club. It's a private membership association. The same thing with a school that's not publicly funded. A school that is not publicly funded is a private membership association or the students that go there are members of an association. And likewise, the parents are, okay? That's maybe two different associations or maybe that's one, it has to be all one together. Neighbors are a private membership association. Your HOA maybe describes a private membership association, but I would, you know, I would caution you on considering the corporate version of your HOA a private membership association. It may just be, but really it's the people in your neighborhood that comprise the association because they have something in common, the same neighborhood. Okay. All right. So the one I like the best is the family. A family is a private membership association. I don't have to say it is. I don't have to put PMA next to it. You guys have seen me. I write the operating agreements and all this stuff where let's say my client's name is John Smith. I'll write the John Smith Society PMA. Okay. We can, we can certainly do that, but we can also do this. The John Smith family with no PMA designation. We can make that the owner. Let them deal with that. We didn't put a PMA designation. Ooh, it's going to change everything, right? So if you name a thing that consists of gr a group of people, members of people, and actually a, a PMA or an association can include persons like corporations and other trusts and things like that. It can include a group of those things. I'm just saying for our purposes, most of us are going to use people. We're going to use two people in the association. Sometimes you guys want a multiple member LLC. So, okay. So it's a, you know, John Smith and Bill, Bill James, whatever. Uh, and those are uh, maybe business partners. And that's an association, except that they're individually the owners and they're not named as one group. So as individual owners separately, the two of them, um, they create charging or protection for the LLC. So we've discussed that before. You guys know what that is. Um, I would hope you remember that by now. But if you want the association, let's say there's three people and you don't want to identify who they are, but you want someone to sign for the whole company, you can and should be able to use a name for that group. So you have an LLC name, whatever that is, and then you have three owners in the company, but maybe you don't want to list the three owners as members. You just want to list it, you know, as like, uh, what do you call it? The Three Stooges, let's just say, okay? So we can call it the Three Stooges as the owner of the LLC. That's an innocent party, okay? Um, it, it doesn't need a tax number. It does not need to be registered. It exists because those three people are alive. They're in the association. They're not dead. They're not um, infants. They are people. You want to use adults too, by the way. You don't want to have uh, children unless they're close to being adult age. I mean, 17 years old is fine. Um, so I would just, you're going to see me change a couple of things. And now I'm about to publish the latest version and the latest strategies on the banking abstract methods and the operating agreement and the reason why I do these things, the reason why I write it, I'm gonna say it all over again. I'm gonna give you guys the actual documents. This is my final latest version. I don't know that I'm gonna need too much, too many changes. Um, I've only made a few changes in the last 10 years. So I don't really think that we're gonna need many changes, but I want you to just kind of get this knowledge and get this, get this thinking. It's just like, if you went to learn martial arts and I taught you how to kick something and break some boards and stuff, okay, fine. But if you're in a fight, you got to figure out when to throw a punch and when to kick and, and when to run away if, if you need to, you know, so you have to kind of figure out how to apply some of these strategies. But the understanding is this, what I'm doing is I'm taking the ownership of property and I'm putting it in the title of a limited liability company and to separate my personal single interest from the ownership of that entity by making myself the single member if I want to separate myself from the ownership, meaning it's going to be out of my estate, well, then I just add my brother, Bill, or something, or I, 
add my friend. I can't add my spouse, but I can add somebody else, okay, an adult. Or I can name the owner as a trust or it's a family or something. I just have to give it a name, okay? There just has to be a name. It doesn't have to be registered. It doesn't have to have articles. And so here's the cool thing about it. Let's say I decide to make my family the owner. So it would be, let's say, call it the John Smith family, okay? So I don't, I'm not going to use the PMA designation. So what I've done is I've established an LLC that holds title of the property. That's the owner of the property. When you talk to me about LLCs, that's all we're talking about. A lot of you guys talk to me about the PMA. I'm not doing PMAs. I'm setting up LLCs with a strategy, okay? Just so happens that sometimes there's a PMA in there. I'm going to use the John Smith family. Leave it just like that, right? And the pushback I'm going to get is something like, hey, uh, this owner is not a, an individual. <laughs> Doesn't have a first name, last name. It's not a person like it, that has a driver's license, right? True. It is the name of a family. In this case, it happens to be a family. I could call it the John Smith family, and it could be my car club. I'm just saying. Let's just keep it simple, though. The John Smith family. So, like, I just had a, fo a phone conversation today, and someone's asking. It's not the bank or somebody. Somebody else. They're doing. They're registering the company for him, or they're doing some sort of thing for him, a service, and they they can't get it out of their little brain that you don't need a written contract to establish a sibling. <laughs> if I have a brother, he's my brother because my mother gave birth to him and then me, <laughs> okay? I don't need a written agreement. And so if it's my family, it's my mom, my dad, my son, my, my brother, my sister, my cousin, all this stuff, my Uncle Bob, okay? Those relationships do not require a written document, of course. So it should be easy enough to have a conversation with people who ask you for a written documentation, some written documentation, the articles, and respond and say, what, are you crazy? I don't need articles. I don't need an agreement to establish my family as an owner, and my family can own stuff. Would you disagree with me? Does your family own stuff? Probably. My family can own stuff. My family decided to own this thing. Do I need a written document for that? I do not, absolutely. Do I need to register my family name with the state? I do not. Does it need a tax number? No. It can have all those things. It's not necessary. What I'm trying to tell you all is that I want you to not just submit to whatever you're being told to do because there's a real reason here why we're doing this. I'm showing you how to manage risk. I'm not showing you how to open up a bank account. <laughs> Any fool can do that, okay? You don't just go in the bank and do whatever they tell you hey, you have to have 25%. No, I don't. Your rules say if I have 25%. I'm not required to have 25%. But if you're going to sit there and tell me that I have to have 25% ownership to open an account, I'm going to ask you this question. Why would the CPA for International Business Machines, IBM, be required to own stock in IBM in order to be a signer for its bank account here in this town? Why would you make him do that? No, you wouldn't do that, would you? So why are you telling me I have to acquire an ownership in this company when I've already organized this company? You can see I'm the organizer and I've organized it in a specific way to manage risk in a specific way, risk which you have no idea about. You don't understand the risk I've chosen to manage in this way. And now you're telling me I have to change the way I manage risk. So I can do that. I don't want to, but I will do it if your bank or your exchange or whatever your institution is will guarantee in writing to indemnify me against the losses or the risks I was trying to manage by the way I had the articles written. If you want me to change the articles, you're going to indemnify me against the risk I was trying to avoid. And you don't know what that risk is. You're not even allowed to do that. Your stockholders would fire you. You can't do that. I know they can't do that. So you see the silliness here? <clears throat> so you got to think this stuff through. You want to divest your exclusive rights in property. That is what we're doing. If, you, if it's convenient for you to add your brother in there or your sister or your friend or something, sometimes I've had clients, you know, in certain situations where I would say, you really need to add a person here. This is going to solve your situation a lot. This is going to avoid litigation. This is going to win a case, whatever it's going to be. Um, and I... And, and they would say, yeah, I could call my friend and my neighbor. I can call my brother. And then um, I'll ask if I can just use his name. And I just ask my clients to do that as a courtesy to the person whose name he's going to use. Not that it's necessary, but it's kind of nice to do that. I've always done that. I think it's the right thing to do. And so the person always asks, well, wow, okay, yeah, sure, you could do that because he trusts you, right? You can add my name to your LLC. 
now we have two uh, a two member LLC. And um, are there tax consequences, or is or am I going to have any? You know, am I going to be audited and all these things, right? Um, and the answer of that to that is no. It doesn't create a liability for the other person. The only liability comes when uh, you're receiving money, okay, for the most part, unless you're doing something really illegal. So, anyways, we know we're not doing that. So, to avoid that inconvenience of having to add another stranger and then have that whole story and explain it, it's actually not very professional to do that. I really want to be able to provide my client with a turnkey closed solution it's a private confidential conversation i'm having i don't want to bring in the other world okay into what he's doing and i'm i don't think he does either a lot of times people do, will do what i ask just because they trust me so i want to do the right thing so if you're having difficulty with this pma designation you can you can deal with it however you want i'm gonna give you another idea here's what you do realize that the pma the purpose of it is to divest your exclusive rights that you would normally have as an owner in the shares or the interest in the LLC. You're divesting that exclusive right into a group. And the group is innocent. It doesn't have a liability. Your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, and your dog would never together sign a commercial lease agreement. They would never file a joint tax return together. Okay, they can certainly do that. They're not doing that. Okay, I've never met anybody that's doing that. But they do have property rights collectively. And, and I can describe those property rights, but I don't have to. The articles do that for me. If I just name something, an entity, an association, whatever, like I use the term unincorporated association. Unincorporated means it's not listed or registered with the government. So that's your family. So if I give my family a name, I mean, you could use your last name, the Smith family, right? That's a private membership association. So you can say the Smith family is the single member manager of this LLC. It has 100% interest, it has 100% ownership interest and 100% beneficial interest. And by the way, I get to sign for it because everybody said so. I don't need articles for that because the association is established by, the, by nature, by the fact that someone is my brother or sister, whether adopted or not, really, that's not even necessary to establish that. I don't need articles and I don't need any written documentation to establish the validity of this type of association. The family is the easy, easiest, I think, for most of us to understand. Now, I'm leaving this with you like this so that you can have a conversation with someone and get what you want because it's so obvious. A family isn't a private association, and you cannot argue with that. I mean, you can if you're an idiot. OK, but you can always prevail if you just have a regular conversation and say to the person who's asking you for this documentation that you have a brother, ask them, do you have documentation that says you have a mom? Let me see the contract that says you have a mom. OK, this is what we're talking about. So I'm giving you this tool. I'm giving you this ability to have this conversation in this way with people. You can come up with better metaphors than I can, I'm sure. So. Um, let me just go through a list here of other types of associations. Your chess club, your bowling club, your baseball team, your Facebook followers, uh, your list of friends, your best friends. Okay, there's four of them, let's say. If you're extra lucky, okay, most people don't have four best friends. But you can have an association of two people that are your friends. That's an association. You describe it as it being unique, exclusive, aside from other people. Okay, it excludes other people. Um, it's a group of people, a list of people. It could also be persons, like I said. It could be companies and people. It doesn't need to be all that complicated. I just like to say, use your family, okay? Even if you have no living relatives, no one's gonna know. You can still have this conversation. <laughs> you can use your friend's family. <laughs> That's part of an association. You can use the neighbor that comes over every week, you know, or you get the idea, okay? I'm, I'm providing you with the tools and the understanding, I hope, so that you can articulate this in a way that's appropriate to whomever you're speaking with. Let's see here. I hope that that nails it, I hope. Um, it's not that I don't like talking to y'all, but I really want you to go and do this stuff. You can do this, unless you just wanna give up and be a single member LLC and do what everybody tells you, okay. You could probably get by pretty well with that. You can still have your pass through if you wanted to. You can still be a single member. John Smith owns everything and still have a pass through. You're just not going to have all the protections. 
I don't see any reason why you shouldn't, shouldn't just go for it. Okay, this is your money, your life, your property rights. You should speak for them. Don't let someone tell you what they are. Okay. All right. Well, I look forward to our, our, our call. I'm going to publish this as soon as it renders, and then you guys will have a chance to uh, listen to it. I'm doing the call. It's going to be live Q&A tomorrow. It looks like uh, 7 p.m. That's going to be November 18th, about 24 hours from now. Look forward to talking to you then. Good night.